students this is narin kumar devedi welcoming you all in the third lecture of electrostatics class 12 so let's begin today's first topic is continuous charge distribution jaisa ki hame malum hai agar kisi body pe charges hum dete hain so those imparted charges over the surface of body may be distributed in two ways one is continuous charge distribution and the other is discrete charge distribution so again these if at all charges are distributed in continuous manner so those also can be categorized under three heads depending upon the size shape of the body so the first type of charge distribution that we will be talking of linear or line charge density so linear or line charge density is defined as charge per unit length of a linear straight wire or conductor so it is represented as lambda which is equals to charge per unit length of the body its si unit we can write si unit coulomb per meter now see the charges are just dis distributed non uniformly so in that case we can talk of linear charge density at a single point so if charges are distributed non uniformly then the line charge density at a point is okay so for that let me first draw suppose this is the coordinate uh, system x y z r axis and say we are having a length of the conductor is l and these are charges spread over it suppose this is the point p now the position vector of this point p from the origin is vector r prime now to have the line charge density at this point we should have an infinitely small length dl of this conductor so this length is dl so the linear or line charge density lambda vector r prime is limit delta l approaching to 0 delta q upon delta l this can further be written as dq upon dl i just cross multiplying this dl so lambda vector r prime dl which is equal to dq now if we integrate this both the sides of this equation then we can have the total line charge density due to this whole length of the conductor so the total charge on the length of the conductor is given as integral lambda over length l lambda vector r prime dl and this is equal to q okay now let's have second type of distribution of charge so here we can have a second type so second could be 
सरफेस चार्ज डेंसिटी एंड इट इज सिंबॉलिकली रेप्रेजेंटेड बाय सिग्मा सो दिस इज चार्ज पर यूनिट एरिया ऑफ द बॉडी पर यूनिट एरिया ऑफ द सर्फेस ऑफ द बॉडी द एस आई यूनिट ऑफ दिस कुड बी कूलम पर स्क्वेयर मीटर नाउ अगेन इफ से द चार्जेस आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड नॉन यूनिफॉर्मली अनइक्वली देन वी शुड हैव द सर्फेस चार्ज डेंसिटी एट अ सिंगल पॉइंट ऑन दैट सर्फेस सो जस्ट टू हैव दैट लेट मी फर्स्ट हैव द सर्फेस हैविंग एरिया एस सो सपोज दिस इज द सर्फेस एस ओवर दिस पॉजिटिव चार्जेज आर स्प्रेड एंड से वी आर हैविंग ऑन इन्फिनेटली स्मॉल एरिया ऑफ दिस एज डी एस नाउ दिस इज द पॉइंट पी एट विच वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग द सर्फेस चार्ज डेंसिटी सो द पोजिशन फैक्टर विद रिस्पेक्ट टू रिजन ऑफ दिस पॉइंट सिचुएटेड ऑन दिस इन्फिनेटली स्मॉल एरिया इज वैक्टर आर प्राइम so we can write now sigma vector r prime equals to limit delta s approaching to zero delta q upon delta s this can further be written as ds now we can write it further sigma ds which is equals to dq now again integrating this we can have total charge on this whole surface s so the total charge on the सर्फेस ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द बॉडी और कंडक्टर कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड एज अ सिग्मा वैक्टर आर प्राइम इंटीग्रल ओ एस एंड दिस मस्ट बी डी एस सिग्मा आर प्राइम डी एस इक्वल टू क्यू ओके लेट्स हैव थर्ड टाइप ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन so third could be volume charge density so volume charge density for that we should have volume charge density and it is symbolically represented as rho so volume charge density rho equals to charge per unit volume of the body now si unit could be coulomb per cubic meter now say if charges are distributed non uniformly then the volume charge density then the volume charge density at a point is uh, for that let me have first uh, volume so that volume i must draw here of the body and for that let me first draw a diagram so this is the volume now now suppose we are having this uh, small volume of it dv where the charges are uh, this one uh, okay so now the volume charge density at point could be rho r prime which is limit delta v approaching to zero delta q upon delta v and this has to be dv so rho vector r prime dv equals to dq on cross multiplying this now by integrating both the sides we can have total charge on the whole volume of the body on the volume of the conductor is integral over v rho r prime dv equals to this thing q okay so now let's have force due to the these all three types of charge distribution and that's our next topic force due to continuous charge distribution so just to have that let me first have uh, empty 
empty space on the board so that we can continue the topic. I hope you all are enjoying. Okay, so let's first have force due to linear charge distribution distribution okay now to have that let's first we have a diagram suppose this is our uh, coordinate system and this is the origin these are x y z axis suppose here we have a line charge of length l now this is the point uh, around this point we are having dl length of the conductor now the position vector of this point from the origin is say r prime vector now we have a test charge q naught having position vector with respect to origin as vector r now the position vector pointing from this dl length towards q naught is say vector r minus vector r prime okay now we can write the force due to this uh, due to charge on length dl at q naught so we write now the force due to uh, due to charge present on dl at q naught is we write it vector df which is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught source charge that's dq into test charge q naught upon since this being in vector form so we write now vector r minus vector r prime q into vector r minus vector r prime now uh, as we have this uh, dq as lambda dl there by integrating both the sides we can have total force so we write now uh, here you can write since dq equals to lambda dl so we have now df equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught lambda dl into this q naught upon mod of vector r minus vector r prime cube into vector r minus vector r prime now integrating both the sides we can calculate the total force total force on q naught is vector f equal to Q naught upon 4 pi epsilon naught integral over the whole length L it's lambda upon mod of vector r minus vector r prime cube into vector r minus vector r prime into dl so this is the total force due to that line charge distribution okay now let's have second type of distribution and just because of that we should have a force <coughs> so here we have second type force due to surface charge distribution and for that we must first have here a surface having charge distribution so here suppose we have a surface S on which charges are spread uniformly and we now have DS surface 
and this is the point having position vector with respect to origin as r prime and everything remains as earlier now the force df uh, due to the force due to charge present on ds at q not is uh, this first step remains same now for second step we must have sigma ds here so here we write sigma ds now total force on q not due to this whole surface s can be calculated uh, by integrating this equation on both the sides so we have this thing integral over surface s this has to be sigma and this has to be ds so this is the final outcome now let's have third type of distribution force due to volume charge distribution volume charge distribution so for that we must first have volume suppose uh, uh, this is our volume uh, this is our volume V and we are having small volume dv okay so the force due to charge present on dv this first step remains same for the second step we must consider now volume charge density rho dv so here we should have rho dv now integrating both the sides we can have integral over complete volume v rho dv here so this way we can have total force okay so now let's have next topic and that's electric field so the electric field as students we have learned in our 10th class so you all might be knowing having some idea about electric field so electric field can be defined as the region of space around a source charge within which the electrostatic force can be experienced by bringing a charge into it so electric field is our next topic and what did i say suppose this is our source charge plus q as source charge we are having now source charge around this say this is an imaginary boundary that we i'm drawing this one so this is this boundary is said to be the electric field if within this we bring a test charge and that upcoming test charge experiences some sort of electrostatic force due to this presence of source charge so this boundary is said to be the electric field of this source charge got it okay so now let's have next topic that's electric field strength electric field strength strength or you may call it intensity as well intensity so electric field strength can be defined as a uh, electrostatic force acting per unit test charge so for the definition what can be said a uh, electric field strength at a point inside the electrostatic field is the electrostatic force acting per unit test charge without disturbing the charge or configuration of charges producing electric field so this can be the statement of electric field strength definition now mathematically what can we write electric field vector e equal to electrostatic force per unit test charge 
Okay. Now the SI unit of this can be written as SI unit. So for force we can write Newton and for charge we can say Coulomb. So SI unit of electric, electric field strength is Newton per Coulomb. Now dimensional formula. Dimensional formula we can derive now. Formula. So dimensional formula could be uh, for force we write M L T minus 2. So this is force and for charge you can have current ampere into time. Now just solving it we can have dimensional formula of electrostatic field strength as M1 L1 T minus 3 A minus 1. So this is the dimensional formula of electric field strength. Okay. So now we can move on for the last topic of today and that's electric field uh, due to a point charge. This is our last topic today. So we write now electric field due to due to a point charge. So for this topic here we will be considering the presence of source charge at origin and at certain distance from the source charge we will be assuming presence of a test charge and the first we will be calculating electrostatic force at that test charge and later on dividing that force by test charge we can have electric field intensity. So let's move on. So before that let me draw a diagram. Suppose this is our coordinate system and here we have origin O, axis X, Y, Z. Now say coordinates of this origin are 0, 0, 0 and we are having presence of positive Q source as source charge. Now from this source charge at point P having coordinates X, Y and Z uh, we have uh, we consider the presence of test charge Q0 and say the position vector of this point P be say vector R. Now the electrostatic force at this test charge is directed away from it and is along this. Okay, so this is our diagram now. Uh, we now write the force at this point P due to this Q0. So the force on Q0. So for that we write vector F equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught source charge into test charge Q naught upon the distance cube or you can write R square and a unit vector. Now here you can have 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q, Q naught upon R square. Now for this R cap we can have vector R upon R itself. Now this further gives us 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q, Q naught upon R Q into vector R. Okay, now by dividing both the sides with Q0, we can have electric field strength or intensity. So, vector E could be vector F upon Q0 and that 2 equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught source charge upon R cube into vector R. 
Now, magnitude of this can also be written as mod of E and that is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon R square. So, this is the magnitude. Now, further we can have discussion on this uh, last result obtained and for that discussion we can we can say under discussion if charge is greater than zero that means our charge source charge is positive so E is directed radially outwards radially outwards ok what does this mean radially outward if you assume the presence of source charge here and take this R as radius and we just now imagine a sphere around this so this will be directed electric field will be directed at this point P on the boundary away from the radius so this is radially outward as is being shown on the diagram now just reverse to this if say q is negative that is less than zero then e is uh, radially inwards radially inwards just opposite to the previous result now for third case third we can say uh, as viewed from as viewed from Q source charge the electric field intensity is spherically symmetric spherically symmetric Spherically symmetric. What does this mean by saying spherically symmetric? Suppose we have again as I said uh, if this is taken as center and taking R as radius if we imagine a sphere then the electric field intensity at every point on that boundary of sphere will be uniform same constant for that reason it is being said that E is spherically symmetric ok now fourth discussion uh, the plot of E versus R square is now if electric field is drawn with respect to R square, square of R then we have a graph like this as E being inversely proportional to square of R now for fifth case discussion we can say the plot of E versus 1 upon R square so here you can have electric field on Y axis and 1 upon R square on X axis so as this is proportional to this so the graph will be a straight line let me make a smooth straight ok so this is the graph now suppose it's a matter of expressing electric field intensity in terms of its components so what can we write now for that so let's have a electric field in terms of its components we can have electric field 
in terms of components uh, as we have vector r equal to x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap and modulus of this which is r is x square plus y square plus z square whole root now therefore electric field vector as a function of position vector r is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught source charge upon r cube it was earlier so we write now x square plus y square plus z square whole pass to 3 by 2 into there was vector r so this is x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap now this can further be written as e x i cap plus e y j cap plus e z k cap and on comparing both the sides we can have uh, e x uh, is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon x square plus y square plus z square pass to 3 by 2 into this x the y component of it could be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon x square plus y square plus z square pass to 3 by 2 into y and the last z component of this could be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon x square plus y square plus z square pass to 3 by 2 into z so these are components of electric field intensity at that point now say uh, it's uh, say if we are asked for the electric field intensity expression in terms of position vector so how can we just express that how can we give the expression for that in terms of position vector so e in terms of position vectors now let's have that also and that will be the last of today's proceedings uh, e in terms of position vector okay so for that let me make some modification in the diagram and uh, here suppose this is our source charge is situated say this is our source charge q situated here having position vector as vector r prime and here we have a test charge q naught presents with position vector as r now the position vector from q to q naught is vector r minus vector r prime and along this the force will also be directed so this way we can write so earlier we wrote the expression of electrostatic force in terms of position vector just write that so force can be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught that source charge test charge upon mod of vector r minus vector r prime q into vector r minus vector r prime okay now dividing both the sides by test charge q naught we can directly have the electric field intensity at this point in terms of position vectors so just do so uh, so e equal to we have vector f upon q naught and which is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught q upon mod of vector r minus vector r prime cube into vector r minus vector r prime so this is the last outcome that we got so students this is the end of today's session
I hope you have enjoyed. So don't forget just to subscribe and like my channel. Thank you all.